but welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and we're off on a trip again because we're next week is the Mille Amelia and I've been thinking what car could I take down to the Mille Amelia and uh, we've chosen the little Alfa Romeo and we're not actually entered into the Mille Amelia what we're going to do I'm very lucky to have done the Mille Amelia competitively three times and just observed it a couple of times as well uh, it's a big Italian street party and there's all sorts of other events going on while the Mille Amelia is going on and I've always wanted to see what they are like. So we're going down to Brescia, see the start, wave them off and just see, just drink in the atmosphere of Italy. Then, what car shall we take? Well, Alfa Romeo Duetta I've had for three years. It's a cute little thing. Um, I just can see it pictured in Siena and Florence and Bologna. It's just the perfect little car to down the you know, minor roads in Italy. But do I actually want to trip the thousand miles to Brescia in it? Well, not really. So the big difference with this video is in a few minutes time, a truck is arriving and it's going to take this car and a couple of friends car all the way to uh, Brescia. We're going to fly into Verona and the cars will be waiting there. EM Rogers is who I'm doing it with. And it's, it's always struck me, this is a really good way of enjoying your cars because it's getting quite expensive to truck across France now in a car. If I just open my iPad, I've just looked at Via Michelin, my app, and from here um, in near Oxford to Brescia is 948 miles. But the killer is the actual cost in fuel and tolls is £497. It's because the fuel cost has gone up in France so much, it's now a significant cost. And also the tolls and Mont Blanc tunnel and things, £146 toll. So yeah, £497 one way. Now, a truck. If you're going to take one car to Brescia, they would quote you about £1,600 or thereabouts. If you get a gang of you together, so there's three of us, if we had six cars, we'd take the whole truck, we're taking three cars. So that brings the cost down to like £1,300. And you think, well, that's still a lot of money. That's each way, so two, say two and a half thousand um, return. Well, I've got £497 one way, so there's a thousand pounds gone. Tunnel, £200, 250 return at this time of year. Um, you're going to stay a night both ways. That's an easy £200 as well. So there's another four, five hundred pounds in hotels. Tunnel, £750. I'm at £1,750. So it's just under a thousand pounds more expensive, I suppose, to truck the cars across. But it, if you had six cars, that would come. That would be about evens, and you have the joy of not slogging across France. We've done it so many times, and we've sort of had enough. And, I, and it means I can use this really cute little car for what it's made for. I'm not worried about miles. I'm not worried. Whenever we do a trip, it's always the journey back that's the killer. It's always the same with Evo. It's the same with doing the Arctic Rolls trip, coming back from the destination. Oh, it's just a big slog, and then you hit. UK and then you've got to crawl through M25 and that's sort of what you remember to be able to just go down put it on a truck um, pick your car up leave it at the airport it gets trucked back a couple of days after you arrive home your car arrives home is ace so anyway I'm going to do the last bit of packing and uh, just get the two cars ready and I'm going to put it on the truck obviously one of the nice things if you're having your car transported you can sort of pre-pack the car so I'll just flip the boot open and you can take things you perhaps wouldn't normally take on your trip like important hats and things but inside um, some of the things I take oh this is a sort of pack of tools I take on all sorts of trips I just it's got spare bulbs and gloves and a few spanners cable ties that sort of thing fire extinguisher seems pretty important with these sort of cars um, a pump um, if you get a punch or whatever you can just sort of blow it up and hopefully keep get to you know where you can rescue rather than it's got a full spare tire on this and then you can just pack some coats and things like that first aid kit so all very useful nice that you don't have to carry them on a plane or charge across your of a packed car right just a little inspection on the alpha see for any scratches and things and it's on the lorry Well that's it, cars are loaded. Today is Friday, uh, we fly out Tuesday morning. So the next time we'll see these cars is about 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning outside the airport. Can't wait.
Today is Wednesday and start day of the Millimetre. Re arrived yesterday, flew into Verona and met up with the M Rogers truck. It was about 10 minutes taxi drive where the lorry could drop off the cars. And went into Breton and did a bit of sighting. The cars are just as one just put in here, a lovely Alpha. Well, it's quite fat wheels on that. Yeah, anyway, so the cars are just arriving here. I'm at the Museo de Milimila, which is in just on the outskirts of Brescia, and it's well worth a visit. I'm just looking, it's open Monday to Sunday, 10 till 8, and it just gives you a sort of history tour of what the Milimila is about. Um, so yesterday, it was all about in the assembly area. Unfortunately, it's not a public area. All the cars arrive and they get their normal sort of checks. But this morning, There are, yeah, bear with us because there's two jets going up and down the big uh, street in Brescia every now and then to prove the Italian Air Force is alive and kicking and they, they like to show off on days like this. Um, yeah, they're, today they're in the square up in Brescia. They're all having the seals put on to signify your car is in the Mille Mille. It's a sort of traditional process in, right in town. Um, and uh, it all starts to kick off. Now, they have a great website at Mille Miglia. Um The website is 1000 Milia IT, is what you have to do. Oh gosh, now I drove this car uh, back in 2012-13. There's a, a Veyron Supersport just coming in. Oh, a Chiron. No, sorry, it's a Chiron. Here we go. That's quite a chase car uh, to have on it. Uh, he's gonna have fun going around a thousand miles in that. I really enjoyed my time with it. Anyway, digress. It all starts to kick off here. 12 o'clock, this, this place opens for the competitors. And this is like a big holding pen uh, for all the guys to then they get released and go up this road onto the start ramp. And that's where we're actually going to be. Um, we stayed, just for detail, we stayed in uh, Simone last night. It's Lake Garda. I find Brescia is it's a bit of an industrial town. It's, it's a nice place, but it's not cracking. Uh, there's Lake Garda very close to here and Simone is just this funny little peninsula you can stay on. Um, hotels are much cheaper, it was about 140 euros last night where we stayed and it's a 35-40 minute run uh, into Brescia. Anyway, we're all going to crack on, I'm going to have a quick look around the corner, see who's turning up and then we're heading into town. Right, we're inside the courtyard now of the museum, everybody's just coming in, it's a great fit pass here, just have a look at the, the Aston Martin just come in lovely example of uh, um, MG about to do the rally and very early Lancia. I mean it's all sorts of cars it takes place. I'm just looking at this. This is part of the regularity. Just head back and I'll just show you this. There's a yellow line and you come see this yellow sort of sticker here. That is critical because when you're doing the millimeter and you're serious about it you're actually trying to line up where this front tire has to go over a timing uh, line wire in the road and it's how close you can hit it to the euro time they've given you. You don't know the time, you look at the time and you, you're in thousandths of a second, hundredths of a second and that's how you sort of line up, you know when the front wheels go over it. It's all a bit pedantic and um, having done the millimeter a few times you just forget about it and leave it to these guys. Basically you need an open wheel car to be able to sort of sport it but that's how you win the millimeter um, and it tends to be an open car that, um, sorry, open wheel car that wins. But anyway, go round. This is super early. Never seen this one, Officio Macchioni Milano. This must be an early uh, example. It's when there was car makers that are no longer with us. UK registered as well, which is nice to see. Lots of 356 uh, in this event. It's sort of a bulletproof sort of car. You don't, it's not all about speed on this thing. I think that's a really good car to do it in. And then these smaller Italian cars, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the make of this car, but you see a lot of these and Oscar and uh, like one next door, because they were the smaller CC. They seem to be quite a, a popular class doing Mille Miglia with these sort of cars. Great Lotus down here. This just gives you the contrast. You've got a Lotus 11 doing this event. See a start number of 446 means it's right close to the end. I was told there's 430 cars in the event, so you must be one of the very last to set off. And then the, the, right at the under end, number 22, you've got a Bugatti. This, there's a huge number of Mercedes. I think Mercedes has done a bit of a takeover this year. Loads of 300 SLs. I think there's about 30 or 40 taking part in a lot of the uh, organizers' cars of Lotus. Obviously, plenty of Jaguar, XK120s, 150s, etc. Um, 
nice to see. But look, then you just strip over this beautiful Ferrari open body. What, what's just great about this is all these cars are being used. Um, this is a thousand mile event. So the owners of this car have no interest in keeping the Maris down or whatever. They just want to do mille and mille. I'm just seeing if there's, yeah, he's got, I'm looking under here and I can see several seals. So this car has done it lots of times. This is very typical of the period as well. Although he's slightly modded it, you could always have all the electronics on sale in the cockpit for a quick fuse change or a, a relay burning out. That's why they're all there as you go around. Stuffy out, etc. And you can see, it's just full of stuff here. Um, so this is your first chance. If you come to do Mille Mille or to observe it, this is your first chance to see all the cars laid out. I think these guys got here a bit early because the, t the weather has been a bit British with us. It's been a bit cold and raining every now and then and they get to hide under there. Anyway, as I say, I'm gonna, we're going to disappear from here and run into town now. But you just get the first flavour of what Mille Mille is about. This is really what I quite like about the Mille Mille is just the diversity of the cars here. Who would expect to see a Rover 75 but apparently one did race in period again and the organiser of Mille Mille liked the diversity. They wanted to show the different cars that made up Mille Mille back in period. But yeah, we're back in regular for a, what a lovely XK140 that is. Alfa Romeo, Bentley, plenty of Bentleys here. Open Jagger, don't know if it's an alloy body or whatever, but real diverse group of cars that do the Mille Mille. Lovely early Alfa Romeo. I think back in period, this could well have been organised. Enzo Ferrari, I'm reading a book on Enzo Ferrari at the moment. He used to organise a lot of cars for the Alpha um, factory. They didn't really have, some, there was a period in the 20s, early 30s where they didn't really have a works team. Enzo Ferrari, Scuderia Ferrari ran the Alfa Romeo team. And he, Mille Mille was a really important event back in period. It actually ran in April, it's always been a thousand miles. They like the, the mile connection because apparently Romans used to use miles as well, so it's a very Italian thing to have the Mille Miglia. Um, so this was probably managed by Enzo Ferrari back in period. Can't confirm this actual car, but this period of car, Enzo Ferrari was heavily involved with Alfa Romeo. Well, the first competitor goes over this line at uh, half past two, it's 10 to one. Um, yeah, the Italians like leaving things to the last minute. As you can see, the red carpet is just going down. They just closed the road. Um, we're going to have some, find a restaurant, have a bit of nosh, and come back here for about two o'clock. Well, hopefully they've finished it. Well, they're just about to start. It's on time as well. We're about to get car number one to go up. Here we go. Well, it's car number thousand. How smart is that? Go. Emilia is away. Now we get one car every 20 seconds has to leave the stage. And these are the very first cars coming through. Now these guys are all in the queue waiting to go through this thing, which is the timing line, which is there. And this is where they have to go off in 20 seconds intervals. And he has to look when his time shows up on that clock and then he'll leave. He'll leave on I'm guessing at the top of the minute. I can just zoom in. There he is. He'll go exactly when it clocks over to 00, 0 14.39, I would suspect. He'll go, and there he goes, and he's off. So he gets his card, he gets that stamped at the next time check. All these cars have radio beacons in them, and you can actually go on a website, a media website, and follow their progress. Just see the sort of speeds they're doing. Often you see nuns at a motoring event, but at Mille Amelia, yep, the nuns come out and watch too. That's quite a fun little thing. Yeah. All sorts at Mille Amelia. Kudin Chihuahua's in pink for bloody duvets. What has he got that on for? I'd say I'd love to do it in a Bugatti one day. What a car to do Mille Amelia in. Find the gear, mate, and he's on. All the races back then were a long length. The Grand Prix 
were 400 miles or thereabouts. They didn't muck about with the 200 miles that we do these days. I don't know why, but the huge distances were covered. And the blower Bentley is just rocked up as well. Cloverleaf used on our Alfa Romeo. It's one of the very first cars, Alphas to use it, I'd imagine. Look at him, he's got all his bags with him. That ostrich, God. There's a proper beaten up blower Bentley, just as they should look. Supercharger, all the vents out, added cooling. Bloody wonderful. Another 8C. Wow. Oh, the big boys now. Oh, there's Brian going, that's, that's Bentley's actual car. I've been lucky enough to do a few things with that car. It drove it in London in the middle of the night for a night shoot. We've got several blower Bentleys. So this is an Alfa Romeo, but it has Enzo Ferrari's shield on the side. So this is when he was running the Alfa team, the Scuderia Ferrari shield. Uh, that is, I bet, a very valuable car. Great to see. Looks as though it's done several millimetre, very beaten up. Just what a machine that is. And it sounds beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Hey, hey, all ladies team here. Got the map on top of the helmet, that won't do you any good, love. I think they might have a separate map. Very good. Francesca and Silvia, Italia. There's some Italian style for you, making the blokes push it along. Very good. 118. Oh, Look at that, BMW Coupe. Look at that. What a funny thing about hard top. I don't think it is actually a part of the body, isn't it? You can see the yeah, the front A post actually comes up and forms part of the body. I take it all back. Now, this is a bit of a surprise. We've got the SZ coming in. I think this is the Zagato team. They won't be actually going over the uh, podium start, but just to celebrate because of 100 year celebration of Zagato this year, 2019. They've let these cars take part as well. I might have said this before, but the Zagato um, body, you used to have it on your race car because they came from an aeronautical background, the original business of Zagato was in aeronautics. And therefore they created the slipperiest body. So if you wanted a race car to go faster, one of the ways of doing it, was to have a Zagato body made for your car, and that's sort of where they got the name. Obviously, they branched out from pure race cars into design, and uh, that's what's given us these cars you see here. It's quite interesting, this um, Alpha you see here, the Zagato body, because it's actually under the skin. That was created out of a Viper V10. I suppose it's um, FCA Group, they own Chrysler, they own Alpha and uh, put the two together and they came up with that. It must be quite a machine with v V10 Viper power though. And you're not gonna see another one very often. I believe built in the UK as well. One of the Zagato is a bit late. Quick, don't panic. What is that? I, sorry, I can't know that. Is that 512? Oh, I'm not sure. So 512, someone will tell me, I'm sure, in the comments forum, but um, I think that's Ferrari 512. It looks rear engine. God, I can't believe it. Never seen it before. Look at that. I think I prefer the original. Sorry, Zagato. Another car that shrunk in the wash. You can hardly call that bodywork, can you? Of course. Just look at the size of that chat in that car. You know it's low bodywork when your legs are exposed as well. You're more covered up in an aerial atom. And then we have a little Fiat Topolino. Lady crew, smothered in numbers. It obviously races every weekend. 01130, what's that all about? Got the sunroof open. Too busy doing selfies and uh, of course he's feeding. Can a little car 
make more noise than that one. I don't think so. Okay, what car are we on to now? 181. Mad to think there's another, well, 250 cars to come through. Um, we're actually going to move out now and disappear. Now, this is well worth it. Are you going to come out here to watch the Millimedia? This start is just a lovely thing because you see all the cars. We are in Brescia. And you can see here the start time is 14.30, so 2.30. It's now, it's getting on for 20 to 4. They are going to head down here and they will finish tonight at 21.55. And then the first car will leave in the morning at 6.15. I should say that 21.55 is the expected arrival of the first car. If you're one of the last car, the, the train, the circus, takes about three hours to go through. So he's going to be arriving. The last car to leave here will get there about midnight, one o'clock uh, in the morning. That's the thing about the minimum. It's quite hard work once you're out on the road. But what we're going to do, I, we're all going to let them dash down to Rome, down to here. And tonight, we're going to head off and go to Modena. Uh, I learned a lovely agriturismo in Modena. We enjoyed it. We're going to leave leave them to dash up to down to Rome and then catch them on the way back because my favourite bit of the Mille Emilia is around Siena. We may get into the Val d'Orta with Radicofani, uh, an area I know really well, just stunningly beautiful. But we're going to catch up with them, I think, around Siena, just south of Siena. And that will be on th uh, Thursday, sorry, Friday, and then we'll go up to Bologna. Uh, that way. So you're just, we're now going to enjoy a bit of Italy. And tomorrow is the start of a uh, big automotive festival, if you like, around Modena, Bologna area. And it's there, they've got together as a motor festival. We're, I'm meeting the Pagani guys there, there's Ferrari down there, Lamborghini, all the big names. Um, the motor festival starts tomorrow, runs all the way through the weekend. So we're going to see what that's all about. So next time you join us, we'll be at this Agriturismo tomorrow morning and we'll set off down from Modena and see what this festival is all about. See you then. Okay, well it's day two of the Mille Emilia. Um, yesterday we left the, all the race cars. We, um, up in uh, Brescia and they were coming down. They, they went a completely different route. So they're set off from Serbia this morning, but we came down just north of Modena. So little agriturismo stayed in before. Um, they're a great concept, these agriturismos. Basically, it's a farm you can stay on and then they um, only serve you this local produce. And here at Garuti um, Agriturismo, they do their own Lambruscos, um, it's a white, a rosé and a red. And I don't know, it's, it's just great. I'm a farmer myself and I just love seeing how it's done in Italy and meeting the family. It's three, four generations here, started in 1920. And you get to park in the tractor shed if you have a yeah, fancy car. And the other thing about this, it's quite well known within the locality. Um, so you'll quite often bump into uh, Lamborghini test drivers here or Arashi Pagani. Or, it's just a well known little mecca um, to somewhere to stay and to eat. If you're visiting Lamborghini or Ferrari or coming down to Modena anyway, we just had a tour of the vineyard here as well and they make some um, wonderful uh, balsamic vinegar up here. We've just seen how they're doing that. They've got some barrels up there since 1920. Anyway, so that's today. We're going to drop down to Modena. Um, I'm loving this little Alfa uh, Duetto. It just like, seems to be perfect. I think if you're going to follow the Minimedia, you ought to be in a sort of classic car anyway. So you've got the challenges that the competitors have got to keep them going for the thousand miles. But say, we're, we'll show you on a map. We're just at uh, Modena here. And then we're going to drop down to Siena tonight. But the rally is, at the moment, making its way down to Rome. Um, and I just think this is a different way of following the millimeter is to let them disappear, go down to Rome, do all that distance, and then you just enjoy what's going on in Modena, Bologna region, and then you catch them on the way up. So anyway, next thing, I'm going to pack the car up and head into Modena, see what this festival is all about. Slightly embarrassed, I've moved the duetta out and I see it's left a little puddle of oil. I think it's from the gearbox actually. Um, so I've just got some dust from outside to remove evidence. Fortunately, we're in a machine shop, so they won't really notice the oil stain on the floor, but I'll have a little look at that when we get home. Yeah, we're just leaving through, and these are all the vines here. That was really fun staying there. And the bill, you know, it's 70 euros for a room and 
dinner last night, 30 euros. It's just a different sort of rate when you stay at an agriturismo. Uh, yeah, and the weather's improved. It's funny, it's just been a bit cloudy and odd spots of rain. But now the weather is, sun's come out, 20 degrees forecast. Looking forward to it. The only thing is, this little alpha left the puddle in the workshop. Uh, I know it's gearbox oil, but it's just something I'm going to have to watch. The engine is bone dry. I should explain, we actually rebuilt the engine. I went out in this car a few weeks before we, it was going on the truck. And I didn't like a noise I could hear. And I phoned up Ian Ellis Alpha, he's near Brighton, and um, dropped it down here. And unfortunately, he could also hear the noise that I could hear. Well, there was nothing for it but to do an engine rebuild. Um, so, yeah, engine out, re reground crank, bearings, new pistons, new liners, um, oil pump, etc. And then putting the engine back in. And then I had to run it in, so it was a quick 1100 kilometres in about 10 days. Down, back down to Ian Ellis where he um, did an oil flush, oil change, filters, etc. Uh, and then when I got home, I had to re the head and then he went on the truck. So all a bit of a rush before coming out here. So I have a brand new engine now. Well, not brand new, but fully rebuilt engine, this Alpha. And I'm quite looking forward to exercising it. I'm only using up to 5,000 RPM at the moment. But in about a day or so, I should be all right and we'll be able to use full revs. Anyway, we're heading into Modena now to see what this car festival is all about. Okay, we've dropped by Modena and we're in now the Piazza Gran because I thought um, Horatio was going to be down here with Pagani. They've got an exhibition on for this Motor Valley Festival. It starts today, today's Wednesday, goes right through till Sunday. And I was going to pop down here and see him and just go through some of the cars he's got, some of the Zondas he's got here. As we all know, it's 20 years of Zonda. Slightly Italian timing issues. Turns out they're in setup day today rather than fully operational. So there's three Zondas in place, the shop's open, and that's about it. So, yeah, the Motor Valley Festival is this new idea this year to replace the Bologna Motor Show, and it's happening all around Modena. There's these sort of pop up sort of shows in the piazzas, and there's a main exhibition hall with the main motor show happening just by um, Modena Nord, just on the Autostrada, close by to that. So, yeah, I'm going to give you a quick tour of this, and then we're going to disappear because we're staying in the hotel um, down south of Siena tonight. And I can't really hang around waiting for everyone to rock up. So time is slightly awry, but um, doesn't matter. We're sitting in the square having a little spritzer and things, so it, life could be a lot worse. Stayed a lovely night at the Borga San Felice Hotel, it's middle of nowhere. Amazing views over there, vineyards down here. Um, but today is the big day. Today is Friday and it's when the Mila Milia comes up from Rome and ends up in Bologna. And to me, it's the, the day on the Mila Milia. It's the best rose. The SS2 brings you up through the Val d'Orcia, south of Siena. And as far as I'm concerned, it is the best area in Tuscany. We actually had a house down there. So um, we're setting off a bit earlier um, than everybody else. So it's just, just after eight o'clock this morning. And uh, we're going to just see some of my favorite roads down there and then actually hit the Mille Amelia and then come up with them and see them go through some of the, you know, the medieval towns around here. Now, coming down here in the morning, I'm a bit, when you, anybody of a, a sort of classic car, etc. This this pristine gravel that's actually painted and I, I can't help but uh, see if I've left any marks. I can see a little, little patch here. I'm not sure if that's me or not. I also love the key on this car as well. We've added a little millimilia little thing, but just the wear marks on that original Alpha key with the clover leaf. It's really rather nice. Anyway, a look inside. this up. Oh, where is it? Where is it? And there we are. 
yeah the water level hasn't dropped at all yeah it's just in there it's no problem at all which is nice oil is actually your side so i'll come round and let's have a little look at that and that's right up the top as well so that's it's quite nice i've sort of got this old car that's got a brand new engine and it sort of works so the only thing we noticed was that little puddle of um gearbox oil which i can check when it when i get home because uh, there doesn't, doesn't seem to be any right let's head into the voucher actually we ought to take the roof off as well actually that's that's really easy on this car i really like the way there's no um popper studs i just got to dive inside you can actually do it when you when you're in the car but i just i like to fold it like that. Just the easiest of roofs really. We've got this cover for it as well. I'm not sure why we bothered putting it on. Just makes it look a bit neater. Anyway, I'll put this on and then we'll go out, head out and you'll see us later when we're in the rows of the Val Dorcha. My wife doesn't like this bit. It's it's just a mechanical fuel pump and hot engine when you park up, which means the fuel evaporates out of the carburetors, and you have to wait for the pump to pump fuel up into the carburetors. But if you don't know, you go, oh no, my engine doesn't work. It's not going to start. That's all what's going on. There we go. down onto the SS2 main Rome to Siena Road. I don't think this is a millimedia car, but uh, lots of spotters here. I'm going to put this the other side of the road. I'm going to park up here and see what goes past. Here we go. Well, we've joined up with the cars that you can see. I just want to point out where we are. See on the sign, Radicofni five kilometers that way. Sartiano, if you used to read Evo, I, we had a house down here and we did quite a lot of features around the house, which is based just outside Sartiano. So an area I re know really well. It's a lovely bit of road. Hey, is the Bentley gonna go for it? No, he's not. Uh, 
Oh, good to see that. That's the Birkin Bentley, quite a famous car to say the least, the Le Mans winning car that Bentley owned. They bring it to this event every year. Sorry if it's a bit windy, I'm hoping we, the mic will be able to do this. But uh, yeah, we swing round, you can see they're heading down to Siena. This little road comes from Radicofani, hits the SS2, the main Roma, uh, Siena road. That's where they're going. And on a map, if you ignore, ignore this, this was another trip I did, but there's, there's Siena. Uh, this is the SS2 that all the way get down to Rome. But this, for me, is the epicenter of uh, Mini Media. So Radicofani is here. They do a little hill climb into Radicofani. We're on this little yellow road here, and they're going to head up to Siena and stuff. So if you're going to do the Mini Media, this is the one to do. This area, um, they're just the best roads, the most scenic. And today, well, after, after Siena, we will head over to um, Florence and then we're going to do the footer pass up into Bologna. It doesn't get much better. But it's a sort of circus. The, it takes a long time for the cars to go through because they actually set the Ferrari tribute cars off first. So the crazy F12s and things, they all disappear first up the road. Then the most historic cars set off. And then the really quick, the D-types, C-types and the... Um, Sterling Moss's, oh, well it's not Sterling Moss's, but the Mercedes 702, the um, 300 SLR comes through right near the end. Although they, if it's hand stuck driving, he's about near the front by the end of the day. So yeah, we're going to watch a few cars go past, then we're going to join this circus and head up into Siena. What you sort of want to look out for just to check your en route is those millimilia signs and obviously people standing around with cameras is a good giveaway it's because the great thing about the millimilia you can it's just a street party for the whole of italy that this this circus goes through it takes what three hours to go past or something like that and it's free it's free to view you can sort of join in because it's all on public roads no look they close a few of the roads for the um the actual reliability trials and this Thing when they have to do certain speeds but generally it's a circus full of just enthusiasts like they are just going out in their 124 spider just joining in now, this year there's a few aston zagatos in the mix as well because they're celebrating the zagato selling celebrating their 100 years their centenary This on the millimeter as well. These are obviously Tifosi and do this all the time, I think, with millimeter stickers all over it. Um, what is it? I can't remember what they're called because they're not the 600, are they? they? Is it the Fiat 600? I think oh, it is. Yeah, so the four seater one. I don't know what going to shout at me. Just to do the clock out. What's that mean? Millimeter, um, but it's 
where um, towns want um, a little bit of um, uh, publicity and pay a bit extra to get the millimetre to go through their route. But that's not the case on this bit of route. I always have this vision of Stirling Moss charging down here in, well, various Jaguars and also the Mercedes doing that crazy time. It just brings it home. How did the average nearly 100 miles an hour on roads like this? Now and then the route takes you through little towns like this. This is Corner Covento, um, and all the cafes open, etc. It's just um, say it's just one big street party for Italy. It's just weird. Some of the cars that entered, it almost looks like a Cadillac up up front. It probably isn't, but it's not what you expect to always see on the Minamelia. There we go. Suddenly get back on a back on the main route again. I think it helps being a little Alfa Romeo. The Italians just love Alfa Romeo. It's like the people's Ferrari, so a little duetto like this is just perfect. One of the slightly madder bits of Minamelia when they come into Siena, actually into the square. It's just quite funny, you have no idea where you're heading when you're on doing this event, and then suddenly you end up in the full reaction. If you want to see a bit more action and have lunch, come into the centre of uh, Siena and uh, all the cars are parked up and you can try and get some, something to drink, a beer or something here. Okay, all free to view. Not a bad setting, you have to say. 
to pass and we've hit a bit of a snag we've got behind an eight car um, he, I can't believe he's out on, on Millimelia day when there's lots of crazy stuff around he's going to be extra popular that man we've been wondering what on earth's going on today seems to have somehow got the food to pass to ourselves just had some crazy F12s go past us at um, A12 super fast. But yeah, it's quite a ball coming up here on my own like this. A little duetto. Which is now fully run in, I think, so I can use some revs. deal to get the these cars included in the tribute because I've not seen them out before. It's just a bit of a worry because they are so so much quicker than the you know historic cars that Millimedia was all about. That's why they let them off go go first but it's just the reputation I just worry for the event. Fortunately we all got stuck behind this little V500 special, which is a bit of a pain, and that just leads to a bit of frustration. But uh, I've got an S class convertible behind now.
top of the food to pass and it's got a bit chilly to say the least. I've had to put my coat on a scarf and you can see the cloud are actually just entering the cloud now. My, my window winders come off. But this is the very top of the food to pass. So these are the hardy ones right at the top. There's a great um, little cafe here that we all stop at and have lunch at. And then you go to the Rakotska Pass, it's to the right here. But we're on, gonna stay on the food to pass. Here they all are. We're going to descend that mist and down there somewhere is going to be Bologna and the hotel for tonight. So looking forward to. Oh, well, we're just leaving Bologna um, and today is the last day of the Mille Emilia and we got up and saw the forecast. We thought it was going to be wet and it was proper wet. And actually the route from Bologna back to Brescia isn't the most exciting route so I, I bowed to um, management pressure and guest pressure to stay in Bologna which I don't mind at all, it is a fantastic city. Um, so we did the food market and a few of the shops etc, it's a great place to stay. So yeah, we're heading back now to Simone where there will be a truck waiting to pick the cars up and back to the UK but for now I'm just going to Back up there and see if what route we can find out. Roof's up, poor old heating's on so we don't mist up. Actually I'm amazed this roof is actually waterproof, which is pretty good. But first of all we have to extract ourselves from Bologna. Battle bendy buses to my right. Thank our lucky stars we haven't we're in a car of a roof for think of the guys in the Mille Emilia and those crazy million pound uh, open cars when you're heading to the finish and you're trying to map read and etc and a car in the shopping rain like this it's, it's quite often wet at the Mille Emilia but it, when it's on the last day it starts to feel like a bit of an endurance getting to the finish. Right here we have a heater, we've got good wipers and a roof that doesn't leak. That's it, well we're in Simone, that is the end of the Mille Emilia tour. Um, it's funny not going to the finish in Brescia, but um, having done Mille Emilia a number of times, it's a bit odd the finish because it's not the great spectacle you'd expect because cars come in dribs and drabs and instantly go off and then being put on trucks like we're about to do or into trailers and things. So it's, there's not like a big hurrah moment as the winner comes across the line or anything. But uh, it's funny that also if I look at the route, this is the last day's route. They set off from Bologna, can, I don't think you can see this, uh, set off from Bologna. They go along Modena, that would have been fun because it's got that festival going on, um, Motor Valley Festival happening today and tomorrow. Reggio Emilia, uh, Palma's really nice and then it just seems to take forever to finally reach Brescia. So by stopping at Bologna, we're just doing it for fun. I've done the Mille Mille before and it's a wonderful city, Bologna. Spend time there and then just do the juicy bits of the tour is what I've tried to do on this video. Just show you the best bits of Mille Mille, how you can enjoy it without actually having to do the whole lot. If you've never done the Mille Mille, well once you ought to follow it all the way around and just see how far a thousand miles is on the type of roads you're on. So my top tips for doing this, one, you have to book well in advance. Hotels fill up very quickly in the core areas, the Brescia area. That's why we come down to Simone. Hotels are more fun here, it's beautiful next to Lake Garda and things. But you've got to remember the circus is at least three, four thousand people and they all need hotel rooms. So that swallows up most of the accommodation in the area. And if you want to come down as well, where you're finding hotels close to the event is really hard. So we book it, you'll need it booking by February. Two, you ought to do it in a classic car. I just feel it's part in the spirit of the event. The Italians love it as well if you're in a classic car. And you want one that's capable, it needs a decent boot, but it also needs suspension. Don't bring the GT3 RS or something like that down here because you'll be banging your splitter 
because you're up in the mountains and it's pretty rough some of the roads so some of the little alpha was just perfect because it's got lots of suspension and it, it doesn't actually have a big you know it can go over bumps and things the other two the 964 and the audi they work really well as well three be prepared for wet weather. I haven't done a Mille Mille where it hasn't rained at some point. And uh, you want to do it in the open car, well, bring some waterproofs with you. We're trying to think, I, you know, we've done it five, six times now, always been one wet day. You've got to remember it's over four days. It was also pretty chilly this year. There was one point where at six degrees. Because when you're going over the Futa Pass, or like we did down across from um, Modena and dropped down to um, Siena, there's a lumpy bit in the middle of Italy and it, you can see snow, we parked up next to snow and you've got to think we're in 19th of May at the moment. Finally, just enjoy it. It is a magic event, it could only happen in Italy. These classic cars, everybody celebrating it all through the route. Just enjoy it while we can still do it. I worry that the super quick stuff we saw on the Ferrari Tribute might ruin it for everyone. I hope not, fingers crossed it doesn't. It's the classic car, seeing those early Bugattis and then the later C-types, D-types roaring through Italian countryside, up in Tuscany, etc. It's just ace. So anyway, I've really enjoyed doing this trip, just bolting together the very best bits of Mille Miglia. Hope to do it again next year. All for now is just to pop the lorry uh, pop the cars on the lorry this is a very lovely way of doing it just uh, take the super classic and then they'll put on the truck and fly easy jet home and two days later the cars rock home hope you've enjoyed the video if you have keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon